so Chimney Rock, you know, right on Silverado Trail, um, probably a pretty popular stop for trips in the Napa Valley. Yeah. They make their Elevage, which is their, uh, you know, Cab Sauv blend. They make a couple of single, they, I guess they'd be single vineyard cabs, but they're actually single parcels from their property. Um, uh, the winemaker, Elizabeth Viana, great, awesome person to hang out with and drink wine with. And this is kind of uh, Chimney Rock paying homage to the great whites of Bordeaux. Okay. Um, story is the owner was, you know, huge fans of the Oberon Blanc. Right. And was wondering why none of the Napa cab houses in California were making a serious attempt at a white Bordeaux style wine. Because everyone in Napa makes a makes a Sauv Blanc, 20 to right. 30 bucks. Yeah. Sometimes they're good. More often than not, I really don't think they are. And when I had the Chimney Rock um, last January or February, it just to me was, wow, this is what Napa Sauvignon Blanc can taste like if taken very seriously. I think one of the things that distinguishes this wine is that it's about uh, about a quarter Sauvignon Gris, okay. a wine that you never hear of. Not really. Um, no. Chimney Rock also makes 100% Sauvignon Gris. Really? Um, hmm. This is also fun. Their current, this is the 07. Their current release is the 08. So unlike most you know, cab houses that release it right away. They hold this for a couple of years. It's, um, I believe it's fermented in a mixture of new oak, neutral oak, and stainless steel. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, let's drink it and see what you think. Yeah, but no, I think I'm, it's I'm one, of the, uh, one of the more fun you know, Sauvignon Blanc blends coming out, of, coming out of Napa. Right, okay, cool. Yeah, you know, one of the things I, and <clears throat> I'm a huge Sauvignon Blanc fan, um, and as we were kind of discussing earlier, I really like um, Sancerre, I love Sancerre, and I love uh, most of the New Zealand uh, Sauvignon Blancs that come out. But California is not something that I really gravitate towards because I get um, a riper, richer style that finishes sometimes a little bit sweet. And so um, I'm curious to see if this gets into that, that Bordeaux realm. You definitely get the green Sauvignon Blanc notes that too often you don't with Napa Sauv Blanc. You're getting the grassiness. I hate using this word because I generally use it in a bad way, but here I love it. You get some asparagus. Right. Um, and I think you get this really nice juiciness that's not just from the acid. I think that's the Sauvignon Gris playing in. really yeah. kind of fills out the mid palate, which you don't typically get in Sauv Blanc. Hmm. This is, yeah, this is... Um an in-between kind of both worlds type of uh, Sauvignon Blanc to me. Because yeah, you get that, that mid-palate is a little bit rounder, a little bit richer, but this has, um, again, like some minerality and a lot of those non-fruit characteristics that you're talking about. You know, a little bit of that, uh, in asparagus, I definitely, um, I don't like to throw that term around either because you know a lot of people associate that. <laughs> so with let's a call it flaw, cucumber or like, grass. But yeah, it's just so fresh and that very like, green. like you want to bite into this wine. Type of yeah. a kind of a thing, like a little uh, almost Gruner Veltliner esque, where you get some of those uh, those herbal type of components to it. Not um, not exactly what I think it's of. Almost when it comes maybe to California it, like um, yeah, you know, there's these all all these notes are subjective, but like fresh from the garden green pepper, mm -hmm. you know. It's like you pulled it, you bite into it like it's an apple, and you know you're like, wow, this stuff is amazing. You can eat this straight out of the garden. That's what this yeah. wine tastes like. Yeah, it is. And then even having a couple of years on it, I well, sometimes I forget it's 2012 now, but um, you know even having uh, like three years on it, it's still um, bright, you know, and just it's yeah, so fresh. fresh. Yeah, it's interesting. So fresh. That's, that's pretty cool. I uh, had my eyes open to. to so Three now, yeah. Three different wines here from... Uh, <laughs> all from Napa Valley, All I from Napa, yeah. It's uh, um, exciting. Chimney Rock, I think this is probably the most expensive. I think 30 35 42 for retail. Chimney Rock, though, I know in 07, which is why I was able to find it, uh, production was a little higher, closer to 2,000 cases. Typically, it's about a 500 to 700 case production wine. Typically, you've got to buy it from the winery. But because 07 was a big production year, you can find it at good wine shops. I've seen it on the wine list at Morton Steakhouse. Um, so it's a Sauvignon Blanc that's not impossible to find. Yeah. And it's just so much cooler yeah. than most Sauvignon Blancs from Napa. Yeah, I, I hear you. I think there's the, the cool factor, the geek kind of factor on it is, is really interesting. And it just tastes good. And I mean, that's one of the things, too, that I, I 
sometimes you have a dynamic of do you like to go with super esoteric stuff that maybe doesn't quite taste so good. All three of these wines are rocking. Yeah, and I don't know if it's Sauvignon. I don't know if it's the Sauvignon Gris or the winemaking, but it this finish is like lemonade. Yeah, it just lingers yeah, and it makes finish. you you know want another sip. Yeah, and I'm glad that we that we tasted that one last because it does have. I mean that that's some depth of flavor for a white wine. It's still even though we've been talking for you know two minutes there. here, it's still on the palate, which is impressive. Um, Good job, Chimney Rock. Good job, Napa Valley um, <laughs> with some, you know, you can grow anything there. So I'm glad to see the experimentation. I love to see the lower alcohol levels. I love the freshness and uh, some flavor profiles that uh, haven't been on my radar in quite a while.